is awesome. Amen. We are sharing today once again from David's prophetic words that God is giving for every day. And I believe even with today's word, let's receive. I tried from the book Habakkuk, Zephaniah and Haggai. We finished two of the three in the first service. But um, let's see how far we get today. These three makers only start five o'clock, eh? Great. Praise the Lord. Good. First one. We go to the book Habakkuk. Come with me, please. The word I want to give you is positioning. To position yourself. Position passion and evaluation. That will be the three. But today we will do position and passion. How will you position yourself, especially today, in what many will call just a lot of chaos in the nations? Have a cook. First thing to write down, ask with honesty. Ask with honesty. Here's this man. How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate, tolerate wrongdoing, etc., etc., for the rest? A lot of frustration, a lot of irritation, a lot of things that this man is saying. He could feel discouraged that he's praying, he's praying, he's giving himself, but still, in, in spite of the giving, in spite of the praying, nothing, nothing, nothing is happening. Now, when we talk about stability because of positioning, that you position yourself, you can position yourself in this place of frustration, irritation, prayer is not answered, I cry out to the Lord. I have all these questions. Why, why, why? And I can stay there for the rest of my life. Or I can quit. And I can position myself in some other place with a lot of rubbish. Maybe you're facing some challenges today. I ask you, what are you going to do with that? You're going to stay there. You're going to honor the frustration, honor the circumstance, honor the fact that you feel the prayers are not answered. Honor the fact that you don't understand what's happening around you. Honor the fact that maybe you really feel discouraged and negative. Or what are you going to do with the reality? Where, yes, in all honesty, bring those questions before the Lord. But actually, God didn't give Habakkuk any answer about his specific questions. So how are you going to ask God and expect God to answer you and put him and his voice in the box of the context of your answers that you need? I don't know if we're going to get it right with God. So you need to position yourself in a different place and just position yourself before God with your answers, with your questions. You're not standing there first of all with your questions. You're first of all standing before the Lord. Amen. Amen. When we're talking about to position yourself. The second point. First one is ask with honesty. Second point, see. See. You need to see. 1 verse 5. Look. You can say look or see or watch. Look at the nations and watch. And be utterly amazed. Everybody say utterly amazed. For I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. I will stand utterly amazed. You will stand utterly amazed if we can see what God is doing. If we can allow God to show us. My question will be, will you be utterly amazed at all the things happening out there? And we can be the talk, the talk of the town can be all about all the chaos and all the things happening out there or what will be the talk of the town 
what God is doing. Because you will be utterly amazed about what he is going to do. He didn't say, I hear your heart, Habakkuk. This is what's going to happen. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. This is how that will happen. He's just saying, you will stand amazed at what I'm going to do. Then you have a, will have a few questions. Watch or look or see. That's the second one. Then when we look in chapter 2, you can now write a, a, a sub point, seven sub points. I will stand at my watch. I will station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. First of all, stand. I will stand at my watch. So that has, it also has the context of stop. The context of stop it. Stop what you're doing. Stand. Stand. But the question, where will you stand? Second, I will station myself. So I will make sure that I'm standing with a certain attitude at a certain specific place. I will stand strategically. You can write it like that. I will station myself means I will put myself strategically in a specific place. I will not stand in my frustration. I will not stand in the negativity or the depression or the circumstances. I will station myself. I will put myself before the Lord. Not before the other stuff that I experience. Not being super spiritual. But I will know my life is first in his hands. Not in the hands of circumstance. Not in the hands of emotions. The up and down in my soul. My, hand, my life is not in those hands. I honor that my life is in the hand of God. And therefore I will station myself. I will put myself strategically in a specific place. That's number two. Number three. I will look to see. I will look to see. So what am I saying? I will look. That is like I will, yeah, I will watch. I will look. I will use my eyes. I will open my eyes. We can pray, but we are not willing to look. And all that we can look at is what's happening around me. But I will look into the next point. I will see what he is saying. There's a lot of people, they looked at Jesus. They saw the miracles. They saw a lot of things that happened. They looked at Jesus. There's a lot of Jews. There's a lot of Pharisees, Sadducees. They, they looked at him. They didn't see what he was saying. They couldn't see what he was saying. This man says, I will look because he will, he will come. God will be there. God will answer. God will be there for you. So by faith, he will look. But then further, the, the next point, he will see what God is saying. By faith. Uh, nothing happened yet. He didn't see anything. But he declared by faith. I will see what he's saying. I will understand what he's saying. And then, understand your answer. That's the next point. That's number five. Hey, number five. Understand your answer. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. I cannot just answer God with anything. I need to understand my answer. You can give an answer and say, yes, Lord, I surrender everything. Do you understand that answer? Do you understand what could happen now? God, I choose to walk out in faith. Do you understand your answer? Holy Spirit must open it up for us because sometimes we give an answer to God and God will take us on our word. Uh, God will take us serious. You won't believe it. <laughs> no, you will believe it. <laughs> but in our answer, we don't understand the consequences. We don't understand what we actually told God. Even in prayer, when you say, God, I surrender my life, the next sentence, what you're going to pray, 
is because you surrendered your life. God take it as immediate. God believes you. God responds immediately. And in the next sentence, I surrender my life, Lord. Show me how, to, and in that question of show me, the next thing is God will show you what to pray next. Because you surrendered your life, therefore the next sentence will be according to a person who surrendered his life. Show me what to do in this. Now you're at the point where God is showing you and what you pray next will build on what you just pray. That's why we said build in the spirit. You build. But if you don't believe that something is happening now and that there, it will happen there, and God is ready to answer you now. God is ready to do a work now. When you open your, word, your heart now and you hear the word and you allow the word now, the word will change you now. The most serious moment for you is when you hear the word, when you read the word, when the word is opened up. That is the most serious moment for the rest of the week of certain things that are adjusted and on that built further for what God has for you. Amen. Understand the answer you need to give. And then he says, the Lord replied, write down the revelation. Well, that's why he also takes some notes, you know. Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald, whoever passes, may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks to the end of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. He says... Write down, you can write there, write down with simplicity his revelation. Write down with simplicity his revelation. Now, in chapter 1, this, the whole context is, it is complex. It's, it's a lot of questions. It's diamakar. It's, it's confusing. It's a lot of things that is, there's no understanding. It's just a frustration. It's a crying out to God. It's just saying, God, nothing changes. I don't understand anything. Nothing is happening. So this, this complex situation. And here this guy comes before the Lord. First of all, God says, I'm going to do a great thing. And this man decides that he's going to believe God. And he positioned himself. Say, I'll stand. I will position myself. I will look because God's going to come. I will understand what he's saying. I will see what he's saying. And I will ask Holy Spirit, how must I respond to God? Because I need to respond with respect. I cannot just say what I want. I cannot just tantrum what I want. I did the tantrum, but then I decided, no, I'm going to station myself. I'm going to position myself before the Lord. And then there's certain protocol, there's certain manners. Hello? And then God says, write down, uh, Lord, what must I write down? I hear nothing. The revelation that I'm going to give you, make it simple, make it understandable. As you will write it down, it will be understandable. It will be simple. There will be a simplistic vision that I will give you. I'm ready to write down. Wait on it. It may tarry. It may take longer than what you want it to take. Remember in the beginning, frustration answers, there's no answer, I see you do nothing, I see nothing is happening, I see, are you here, Lord? Where are you? What, what are you going to do? Now, yes, yes, all the steps, and once again, wait. But if you know where to wait, you'll have the strength to wait. Because in the waiting, God is also silencing all the other voices and all the other things in our lives so that we will hear accurately. To hear in a simplistic way, to hear and understand what God is saying, I need to be silent. And for that silence, for that focus to come in, many times that's the waiting. So we say, wait, and God is standing there just, for what? No, he's waiting for you. The waiting, the thing of be silent before the Lord is, 
and God waiting for you to become silent so that you can focus on Him, so that you will be able to hear His voice, not among another 40 voices, but so that all, all those other voices can shh, and your Father can speak to you. Amen? For your sake, not for His sake, that He wants you to be, become silent. Okay, so what will happen? Let's go to chapter 2, verse 14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. As the waters cover the sea. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. There's a lot of knowledge of a lot of rubbish happening. And the earth is filled with a lot of rubbish, with a lot of chamorth. God says, but this is what will happen. The earth will be filled. The people will know. They will have the knowledge of the glory, the beauty, the attractiveness, the awesomeness of our God. It will be on the lips. Everybody will know the awesomeness of God. If they serve him or not, they will know the awesomeness of God. The fame. Moses, remember, Moses said to God, God, your fame. Your awesomeness is known by all the heathen nations. They are, they are out there. If you kill this whole nation, those people out there that even they are not serving you, they will say, oh, God could take them out, but he didn't have the capacity to bring them in. So please, Lord, for the sake of your fame, don't kill this nation. You remember Moses prayed that? And then God changed his mind. Hello. So what are we saying? The earth will be filled with the awesomeness of God. But my brother and my sister, it can get, get worse. A lot of rubbish. More and more and more. According to what the word says in the end time will happen. But where does it start? There. This piece of dust, this earth, must be filled with the knowledge of the beauty and the awesomeness of God. But okay, what can we do? You guys are awake. Hallelujah. We can say, I had it. I am filled with the anger. I'm filled with the self-justification. I'm filled with the fear. Or I'm filled with the rejection. I'm filled with how I was treated wrongly. I'm filled. I had it up to here. And the next moment, something's going to happen. It's going to come out. Now God says, you need to be filled. You need to be filled with the glory of the Lord, with the beauty of God. It must be up to here so that somebody pushes you. It's going to come out. How beautiful is your God and how beautiful life can be. How awesome is his grace. How attractive is grace. Yes. How awesome is love. How you cannot even fully describe his character and, and, and what he's doing and his purpose and his motivation with you. It's just there. So somebody pushes you, it's going to come out. Because this piece of earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Amen. Let's say, I will be filled with the knowledge of the beauty of my God. So for, that, for that to happen, you get into this word. So that this knowledge of his beauty will fill you up. So that when you come in a situation, it's not you had it up to here and now the rubbish come out. No. Now just the rejection, now the depression, now the negativity come out because you filled yourself with the negativity. The knowledge of negativity, the knowledge of a lot of facts where you could be right and the others could be wrong and you are right. So you are filled with the words of how you are right and how they are wrong. And your self-justification and righteousness will come out. But nothing of Christ can come out. Because you filled yourself just with all those other stuff. God's going to help you. God's going to help me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Then. God is saying that. I mean, he told this man. 
was filled with frustration, filled with negativity, filled with a lot of things where they screaming out in his life of frustration. When he positioned himself accurate before the Lord with faith, honoring that God's going to do a thing. And God didn't speak yet. God didn't speak yet. But then in that place where he positioned himself, he chose to believe that it's going to happen and it is happening and it will happen. Amen? In his prayer. Lord, I have heard, chapter 3, verse 2. Lord, I have heard your fame, of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds. And then he prays. But now this time he prays something different. In the beginning he says, Lord, I see this and nothing happens. Lord, I see that. Lord, I see that. Why this and why that and why that? This time, huh? I have heard of your fame, how awesome you are. I stand in awe of your deeds. That means they where you stand, where you, they where you position yourself. You must be able to see his awesome deeds. You must be able to see that God is awesome. And from that place you pray. Repeat them in our day. Please, Lord, do it again. Are you with me? Repeat them, Lord. Do it again. Oh, man, I would love to see how the men and the quails, you know. Sasko, Sam, and Kentucky. But the Sasko is not so healthy anymore. <laughs> Falling from heaven. Yeah, ach, ach, yeah, just for a start. <laughs> mm. Okay, sorry. Some of you guys are too serious. Um, Repeat them in our day, in our time. Make them known. Make them known. Let everybody be able to talk about it, Lord. I want everybody to talk about my father. I want everybody to talk about my best friend and hero, Jesus Christ. I want them. Let them talk, Lord. <laughs> because you're going to do such a great work. You're just going to do such an amazing thing among us and among the nations. I want them to talk about you. Are you with me? He didn't get his answers for his first questions yet. But suddenly he's praying a different type of prayer. Different type of prayer. Make them known in wrath, but in wrath, remember mercy. And in the wrath is when God deal with you, when God dealing with me, God have mercy. Mercy is God's practical help. God when you deal with us, give us your practical help. Otherwise, we're not going to survive. We will not be able to do it. We will not be able to, we will not have the capacity to break through. And so it will be. That's your prayer. Amen. We are talking about how you are positioning yourself in this season, my brother, in this season, for that what God has for us here on earth. Focus then. Focus then. Verse 3. God came. His glory covered the heavens. His praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise. Rays, rays flashed from his hand where his power was hidden. His glory covered the heavens. When you look up, you must see the beauty of God. I know even when we look at the stars, you would say, how on earth and how in the heavens can somebody not believe that there's a God? Take that time. Take that time. Take that time with him. Amen? It can be so great if you just remember that the heavens declare his glory. Even in the sunrise, in the sunset, Amen? Even you guys staying on the farm, enjoy it. But make sure you speak to God and, in, and appreciate Him in, in creation. Amen? Appreciate your God as you see His beauty out there. You need to learn how to appreciate God with a genuine heart. Glory covered the heavens. His praise filled the earth. All the rubbish, all the screaming, all the frustration, for the earth. No, 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 no. His praise. His, the earth will be filled with a knowledge. 
and with the knowledge, the words in here, the knowledge, the, 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 uh, the word of God, all those words in here, what will happen? You will hear the praise of God. People will honor him. People will praise him. That's his, what this man is declaring when he's positioned accurately. There will not be this, this screaming and the rubbish happening out there. No, there will be a praise unto the Lord. Amen. Make sure that the place are full with him. I told you about the guy when we asked for three-year process to get a permit for a Christian school. And there at the glass palace, wasn't may become the palace of the Lord also. Amen. That he's praised there. And this guy has sat there, who remember, he would sit there and say, yes, yes. You know, people talk like that. And by the third time, I said, no, 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 this is not going to happen. So when he went on and he said, yes, yes. I said, yes, that's my Lord. He was like a little bit frowning. And, and just two minutes later, yes, 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 I love him. I would just interrupt him. And then the next is, yeah, 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 it's a plan for your life. And it was like 20 different sentences. I was ready for the next one. That night, I know, that guy went home. And when he would say, yes, yes. There's some sentences that you will remember. There's some sentences. No, the earth will be filled with the praise of God. The earth will not be filled with him mocking Jesus. With him using it as a swear word. Taking his name in vain. It's not don't just first just point the finger. Ask Holy Spirit, what must you do? Let's fill that office. <laughs> With the knowledge of Jesus, of who he is and what he's doing since that guy. At one stage, when he was, I said, you're really calling on the name of the Lord, eh? <laughs> he felt so <laughs> uncomfortable. The man. But I had a, a wonderful time. I mean, I'm serious. It could be a lot of frustration. It could be a, a thing of judgment rising. It could be a thing of I'm compromising. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to say something. I can walk out there with self-condemnation. Why were you too shy to say anything? Ask Holy Spirit, how must you deal with that situation? But around you, Jesus will be praised. Around you, he will get the glory. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Okay, where are we now? Heavens with his glory. On earth will be filled with his praise. His beauty will be there for every, every day. His glory covered the heavens, praise for the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise. Every day, every opportunity, his splendor will be there. His beauty is there for you. Every sunrise, there's beauty in it. Now I'm talking about the son of righteousness, Jesus Christ, that wants to shine over your situation. He wants to come up and shine over your opportunity, over your challenge, over that exam, over that financial thing that you need to face, over that relationship that you need to settle. He wants to rise like the sunrise. He wants to be there. Amen? Let it be so for you in Jesus' name. Like the sunrise, rays flashed from his hand where his power was hidden. You feel there is no power and suddenly the power is there. Just very suddenly God will just do something. And you will not be able, many times, what happened? I don't know what happened, but God just did it. I don't know what happened, but God just did it. I didn't organize that. You didn't organize that, but God just suddenly moved. Boom. Like this lightning bolt. Are you with me? And the guy that was drunk under the tree he said, God, you can take my life. And the next moment, boom! Lightning bolt was there. God, I was not so serious. <laughs> let's, let's. God is going to take us serious. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. So that's the next one. So what will I do? What is his decision in his prayer? Verse 16, second part. Yet I will wait patiently for the day, for the day. Uh, sorry, let me start in the beginning. 
I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound of what God is doing. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently. I'm in this place where I'm anxious. There's a lot of things happening in me. I feel this anxiousness. I feel this lot of emotions over me. But I say, but still I will wait patiently. In spite of these emotions. In spite of chapter 1, what we started with. In spite of all those stuff. Now that I understand how I must position myself and I hear what God is saying, He's not answering any of my questions. But he spoke to me, and I s suddenly I understand, I can wait patiently. I can wait patiently. That's verse 16. Yet I will wait patiently, verse 17. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crops fails, Fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle. Yet I will. Yet I will. Everybody say, yet I will. Even though, still I will. Even though, yet I will. Why? And say, okay, these things can come to me, but I've positioned myself in this life. That my life is not determined by my circumstances, my feelings, what I go through, positive, negative, whatever. It's not determined by that. But it's determined by what God is saying, what God is doing, where he is, and his agenda. That he's going to do a great work. He's going to do a great work, and his beauty will be seen. The beauty of life, the meaning of life will be seen. It will have substance. My life will have substance that will be able to stay even for generations. You know? My grandpa always said, Granny always said, that will happen. May that be so. That your grandchild will say, Granny always said, and because Granny has said that, and I remember that, and I took it in my heart, therefore my life will not be the same again. And that is your legacy living on. That is your future living on. That, what, that is what has eternal value through your life. Get into that life. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Everybody say rejoice. When the, my kids were small, I didn't see yet the major effect of that. But uh, every morning uh, they would learn some ver verses. And I will say the four by four and then I'll say, Rrr! and everybody, they will know rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Four by four, hey? You remember that? We even said it here. Philippians 4 verse 4. That rejoicing is not a little bit of gladness. That's you. You're putting energy in it. Yet I will rejoice in, in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God my Savior. In God my Savior. So this is his decision. Nothing changed, man, except him. He changed. And his position changed. And his perspective changed. So even though in the beginning, he was also loud. I scream, I call out to you and nothing happens. Now suddenly also he's very loud. And I said, but now I will be loud in how I rejoice in you. How there is a joy and excitement in me about you. I will rejoice in my circumstances, how it changed. No, I will rejoice in the Lord. Amen. He will be my strength. Verse 19. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. So he's your strength. He's your speed. Okay. He gives you the speed. When you must be like that deer going up, you remember how he said it? Like the deer. You saw that, that uh, deer, that bokka, against the wall of the dam. How they can get up there, I don't know. We don't know. And then they run down. And they, boom, 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 boom. He gives you that supernatural ability to go wherever you need to go. But wherever you need to go, 
is on that platform. He makes you stand on a certain platform for a certain perspective. Where do you stand? Where do you position yourself? At the end of this whole book, he says, God is enabling me to stand in a place where I have the right perspective, where I can stand on the heights, where I can be lifted up here as I chose to stand on my watchtower, in my watchtower. So there I will be able to stand, I will have the right perspective, because that I choose him. He's my strength, he's the speed that I will go with, not, not my stress, not the anxiety, not the fear that there will be lack, not the this, not the that, no rat race. You're no rat. Hello? And God will set the pace. And he will make your feet like the feet of a deer, so that when he wants to brag about you, when he wants to brag about his strength, you will organize it. There's a steep wall that you must get out, get to the top. So that there at the top, you will have right perspective and you will still rejoice in the Lord. Amen. This is positioning yourself. Okay. Second one is much quicker, but uh, I know you are passionate. Zephaniah. The word is passion. The first one was, sorry, position in your vision. Your positioning in your vision. Your position in the vision. Because when he makes you stand on your heights, that's where he, Jesus and the devil stood when he wanted to give him the vision. You have a passion to that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. Here I am, the devil with you, Jesus. I give you the kingdoms. Just bow down. And I give you, just shortcut. I'm opening the door for you. What the Father sent you for, you can have it. Just bow down, and I give you the kingdoms. And the devil, and Jesus said to the devil, get behind me, Satan, for there's only one that you will worship. Amen. What am I saying? Okay, let's rather carry on. Passion. Passion in your vision. Your vision can kill you if you are wrongly positioned. If you're not positioned accurately in Christ with God, focus on Him, and that the essence of the vision is Christ, your vision will be a curse in your life. So what's the passion in your vision? You need to do something. You're just frustrated that you need to do something. Something needs to happen. What is driving you? What is driving you? The passion in your vision. We see that as a theme in Zephaniah through the prophet Zephaniah when he speaks. We see verse 7. Verse 7. Be silent before the sovereign Lord. For the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He's consecrated those he has invited. Be silent before the sovereign Lord. When you have a passion, when you have some energy, when you have some ideas, when you are excited about the ideas, the first thing God asks you is to be silent that he will just make sure that you are directed in the right way, in the right direction. Because when we're excited, God doesn't want to take that excitement away. He doesn't want to take it away. And he wants to make sure that you will not destroy yourself with that energy, with that what is inside of you. You know, the little child is excited. And on the one side, yes, to make him silent in the right way. But you don't want him to go overboard and just run out there. Once uh, there in the house where we stayed, in Esther House, Universitas. I remember Jaden was just r running around. You know, I became much thinner because I had to run a lot. <laughs> After die maniki. And then somebody opened the gate. We were in the front. And he ran. Oh, I remember that day. And he ran and he ran over the street, Mach Machnir Street. Just ran full out. Boom, on the other side. You know, they're on the grass. I thank God, no car came. I mean, it would have been in heaven. Why did I say that? Nobody knows. Run with a passion. <laughs> Run with a passion. But God wants to protect you. And first say, stop. This is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to do your passion that I've placed in you. My love that will be your driving force. My joy that will be your strength. That what I've put in you, the passion that I've put in you. Let's talk just about it. 
Let's talk about it. Hello? Be silent. So God will bring the T-junction. The discipline with the T-junction. But this, sometimes we feel, hmm, now I had this vision, now I must change this. I have this passion to do this. I have this passion to reach the, the young people. And, and But Matt, now, you know, this passion is being smothered. It's, it's gone or it's... Because now I must change this, I must change this, I must adapt with this, I must adapt with that. You have a passion as the football player in America, and you have a coach, you won't believe it. And then suddenly in the game, while the game is on, the coach says, do that, that sign. That means what? Time for tea. No. Time out. Time out. Oh, you know, he's killing our passion. No, he's protecting you that will not a lot of, make a lot of stupid mistakes because he has a plan so that you can be a winner. He has a plan so that you will be an overcomer. But now, in the past, not anymore, you know, Christians, then three will carry on with the ball. Five will get offended and buy each one their own ball so that they can have their own game because they are free in Christ. Hello? And what a circus in that football team. But amazing. The guys in the world understand that when the captain says, Psh, or the coach says, Psh, it's just time out and everybody knows where to go. Oh, to him for whatever he has to say. Man, oh, what a day it will be. That God is doing this, the day of the Lord. There is a day of the Lord one day where it will be T-junction. These guys, eternal hell. These guys, eternally with him. But God, have mercy on us and let there be a T-junction today so that I can change that what is rubbish in my life. But I don't know about the T-junction. That guy playing does not see the full picture of what the coach is seeing with his strategy. He has a specific strategy. You with me? And if your team play, it's not just about your teammate and what he did and what he didn't do and throw a tantrum there on the field. No. You will hear when God is calling time out. Stop. With a passion that you want to win. Be silent. Be silent. Before the sovereign Lord. For the day of the Lord is near. Because he wants to speak to you. He wants to deal with some things. Are you with me? So that your passion will not destroy you. So, be silent. That's number one. Number two, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Be silent, number one. Number two, seek the Lord. Verse five in chapter two. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, you who do what he commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger, in the day when he deals with fire. You will be protected if you understand that you seek his face. Seek the Lord, all you humble, you who do what he commands, when you are teachable, when you walk in humility. Seek to be walking in humility. Because with your passion, you can do a lot of exploits. God wants you to do a lot of exploits. God said, even if you have faith, even greater works than what I have done, Jesus said, you will do. So with passion... He wants you to do major, 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 major things in the nations. Hello? But you need to seek Him, that He's the focus. You need to seek humility. You need to seek that you are just obeying Him. Because that humility will protect you in the day when He's dealing with the nations. And the fire is coming. Amazing. That more and more in the end time, the devil is not going to cause the chaos. He will be, as a deceiver, he will be so intense, he will bring the peace. And God says, through prophets, prophecies, God will bring the chaos. Once again, I will shake the nations. God's going to shake everything. The devil is going to come as the angel of light and say, I'm, I'm the man of peace. Hello? The Illuminati, what, ach, what everyone call all these guys. And he will sit on the throne. And at the end of the day, he will be worshipped. 
Not everybody in Israel will bow down, but they will talk about him with his wisdom and all the answers he can give for the nations so that the nations can have peace, so that the nations will be protected. Uh, if there's plagues, if there's viruses, if there's this, if there's that, there's just the, this answers coming that the world is arrested to the answers that are coming through. And even in this time, it's part of preparation. Part of preparation. When God will give wisdom when he shakes everything. When he shakes everything. May we stand. May we stand in him. Amen. Are you with me? That is, seek him. Seek him. That's number two. First one, be still. Second one, seek him. Third one, three point. Chapter three, verse 14. Nearly going for a landing. Sing, daughter Zion. Shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter of Jerusalem. Okay. That's a command. That's not necessarily because you feel you want to. You sing. You shout. You be glad. You rejoice. Even if your soul says, now you are faking, man. It's all a fake. No. It's not a fake. It's what my spirit wants to do. In my spirit is shut up a, a rejoicing, a strength, a shout for the Lord. But my soul, with all its whatever it's going through, is putting this lid on it. And has the authority through your will to do it. But if you can take off that lid, you will see there's a dynamo in here that want to shout and praise your Lord. Tell your neighbor, sang. Sing. <laughs> Not the guy only when he's drunk, you know? When he's drunk, he has a lot of singing. He can carry on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then 3 verse 16. On the day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. He's like, I'm like this. Don't, you don't have to do like this. You don't have, no. You can stand. You can sing. You can praise your Lord. You have that capacity. So with a passion, sometimes somebody will go with a passion and then those guys, they killed my passion. No. Interpret it accurately for certain things to be dealt with so that your passion don't destroy you. And then with, with it, take it as first of all a command from your spirit that you will sing, you will be glad, you will rejoice, you will shout. Because it's there in your spirit. Okay? And lastly, see his blessing. See his blessing. Verse 17. The Lord your God is with you. He's mighty to save. He great, take great delight in you. He quiet you with his love. He rejoice over you with singing. See his blessing. Then we talk about passion. So what is the passion? Why are you excited? Because of the first facet of blessing is the Lord your God is with you. His presence. You can write there. His presence. That's the biggest, biggest blessing in your life. The biggest blessing that God ever, ever can give you as his child is his presence. The fact that he's with you. He will never leave you, never forsake you. That is the blessing in your life. Your father will not forsake you. He will never turn his back on you. Jesus will be there. Holy Spirit will be in you. The temple of the Holy Spirit. Your life. Okay? This is the last five points of that verse, and that's it. His presence. Secondly, the first is, Lord your God is with you. Second one is mighty to save. He's mighty to save. His ability, you can write there, his ability is there for you. His ability is available for you. He enabled you to become his child. He enabled you to, to conquer. He 
is the warrior. He is the conqueror. You are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors through Christ who brought us the victory. Amen? Amen. So through His ability of what He has done on the cross, that ability is available to you. Romans 8 says, The Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit then, who raised Christ from the dead is living in you, how much more will He quicken your mortal bodies? So the Spirit in me, just, just touch here. The Spirit in me, let's say that, that Spirit in me raised Christ from the dead. Do you understand what I'm saying? The one in here raised Christ from the dead when he came from the grave. It's the one living in you who did it. First, his presence, biggest blessing. Secondly, his ability, that's in you. Okay? Thirdly, we said, the Lord your God is with you. He's mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. His opinion. His presence. His ability, number three, his opinion. You can write his opinion. He decided he has one opinion, and that is taking great delight in you. He's taking great delight in you. You are there for his pleasure. Now you can be miserable and have issues with yourself and issues many times with people because actually you have issues with yourself. Many, 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 many times when we have issues with people is because we have issues with ourselves. But if you can accept God who is smiling over your life in spite of a lot of mistakes, his opinion is, no, I have excellent plans for my son, for my daughter. His opinion, third one. Then, number four, what do we have now? The Lord your God is with you. His presence. Mighty to save, his ability. Take great delight in you, his opinion. He will quiet you with his love. His passion for you is love. His passion. He has a passion. So even when we talk about passion, you first look at all, in everything, at his passion. That you will be led by his passion over your life. God says, receive my love. And then with that love, you will love me. You will have passion for me. Because I have a passion for you. Therefore, the greatest commandment, Love the Lord your God with everything, your heart, your strength, everything. So you are consumed with that passion to love him. And then second, other side of the coin, first of all, have a passion for yourself with my passion. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you cannot love yourself, you cannot love your neighbor. So have my passion for your life. Love me with the passion that I love you with, and then love yourself. Why? Your heart better be where his heart is. His heart is there with a passion of love for you. So you better have a passion of love for yourself. If you agree with God, if you want your heart to be with God's heart, you better sort out the stuff that makes you not passionately loving yourself. Because if you cannot then you cannot love others. You have issues with others many times because you have issues with yourself. But if you can love yourself with God's passion that he has over you, then first of all, you are humble. You agree with that. What is his passion over me? I want to have the same passion. And then with that, you love others. Amen? We're talking about passion. He will quiet you with his love. That, that fear that you will not be accepted. That fear that you will be rejected. All those things, no, must be silenced. He will silence you. Shh. Because perfect love, 1 John 4 verse 18. Perfect love drives out all fear. My perfect passion will drive out all other, fear, other passions. That's actually built on fear. And the last one, he will rejoice over you with singing. My brother, my sister, yes. 
The last one, you have God's excitement. He's excited about you. You have his opinion about you, but there's an excitement in him about you, about your future, about that, what he wants to do in you, through you, with you. He's excited about you and the relationships that he has placed you in, circumstances that he has placed you in. There's an excitement. That is see the blessing. When you can see the blessing, you will understand the passion and your heart and your passion will be in line with his passion. So that when you sing, why will you sing? If he's singing over you, you better sing over him. Not true? How a trillion times more do we have reason to sing about him than he about us? He rejoices over you with singing. There's a passion that burns in him that he must sing about you. So when heaven is listening to the Father, they hear your name because he's singing over you. Hello? May you understand that, my brother, may God set you free. That his passion will be there. And that your passion will be clean. Will be clean. Because when it's not clean, it's lust. It's lust. And lust destroys. Lust destroys relationship. Lust will destroy you. It is a, it is a fire. Destructive fire. But the destructive fire can only be dealt with with a consuming fire. God himself. Where his love, his passion is a consuming fire. And that fire, no water, that fire destroys the destructive fire in you. God, come and set us free. We trust you for that, Lord. Thank you, God, that you have such a passion over our lives. And even as we partake in communion now, we want to say thank you, Father, for your passion. Thank you for the fire in your heart burning over our lives. And it's not a fire of anger, Lord. We receive afresh the blessing. We honor you. We thank you. We say thank you, Lord. We appreciate your blessing that you are giving us. And first, yes, Lord, that you will not take away your presence from us. God, that you give us your ability. Because you went to the cross, we are able to turn our back on the world. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. If you are here, and even a visitor, you are free to partake in the communion if you know, if you know that your life is right with Christ, there's no unforgiveness, but that you are respecting the blood between you, yourself, you and others, you and God, then you're free to partake with us in communion. God, as Paul said, he received from the Lord that in the night that he was betrayed, God, that you took the bread, you broke it, and he said, take, eat, this is my body that was broken for you. It's a forgiveness for all your sins. So also, God, you took the cup and you said, this is the New Testament in my blood, drink thereof. For as often as, as you drink this cup and eat this bread, you're proclaiming my death. You said that we proclaim the excellent, excellent work that you've done on the cross when we partake in communion. And today, as we partake in communion, we want to proclaim your excellence. We want to proclaim the excellence of how you gave yourself as the perfect, perfect Lamb of God on the cross. And that we can today just boast again in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that every man, every woman here, Lord, that where there's self-condemnation or things that they're going through, that they will take strength, knowing that as they boast in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, they have the capacity to walk in your strength. Thank you that we are so precious in your sight. And that we believe it as we look at the cross. Thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.